offline web applications, they might seem a little bit contradictory at first because web applications in our mind live online. They need to have a connection to the server in order to function, right? But thanks to progressive web app technologies or PWA technologies and some of the new features that we launched in Vaadin 19, they're actually pretty easy to build. So in this week's Vaadin Tips video, I want to show you how you can do that in your own application. So here I have my simple trusty to-do application. Essentially, it has one property right now, which is an array of to-dos. I populate it with a array that I get from calling my backend server. And when I save to-dos, again, I use the binder to submit them to my server and then update the array. So right now, if I make any changes here, I can go ahead and refresh the application and you'll see that they get persisted and I can add some uh, new items to the list as well, like that. And as I said, Vaadin 19 added some pretty cool new offline functionality. So if I make my application go offline right now, what you'll see is that we get this little offline banner here telling that our connection is lost and it kind of hides away so it doesn't take up too much space. Now, one problem with this right now is that our users can still interact with the application. They can type in things, press add, they can try to do all kinds of things in the UI. But since we don't have that server connection, they're all gonna fail. And we know that because we're offline. So what I wanna show you is how we can track that connection state and disable things in the UI and give the users some helpful messages so that they know what to do. All right, so let's go back online and let's see what, how we can do this. So you can see I have an import here for a couple of things from this new connection state package here. So I have a connection state store, I have a connection state, and I have a connection state listener. So essentially the connection state store is what keeps track of our current connection state. That connection state is one of the enumerated values in the connection state here. And we can add a connection state listener to get notified whenever those change. So here are my connected callback. What I'll do is I'll get, first of all, a handle to that connection state store. And the connection state store is on the window.vaadin object. So this is what we would normally have to do. Apparently we forgot to add it to the interface in TypeScript interface. So what we need to do just as a temporary workaround, hopefully no longer when you're watching this video, is just cast uh, the window here to any, and then we need to cast the connection state store again. So connection state store like that. And like I said, hopefully you won't need to do that in a, in a couple of days anymore, but for now, that's what we'll do. So we can continue on. So once we have that, what we can do is add a state change listener. And as you can see, this takes in a connection state listener. And if we implement that, you can see that it gets into values as parameters. It gets the previous connection state and it gets the current. Now we're not interested in the previous state, so we can just blank that out, but we really wanna know the uh, current state, which is again, a connection state like this. And the only thing we wanna do here is save that state or essentially not even save the state, but we wanna save uh, a new property called offline. So that should be true whenever we are offline. It should be false whenever we're online. So for that, I will first of all, initialize a new property. I'll use an internal property again for this. So I'll do a private property called offline, initialize that to false. And in a bigger application, I would really suggest that you put this logic into your MobX store. So if you haven't seen my previous video on using uh, MobX for application state management, I recommend you go back and, and check that video as well, because that way you can reuse the same uh, offline state throughout the entire application. But since we only have one view here, this is a good place to have it. So we have a property now and we want to update it from here. So this dot offline, is equal to, and then we'll check the current value. And if that current value is equal to connection state dot connection lost, then we're offline. In other cases, we're online. All right. So with that, we now have a property that we can use in our template here to display whether we're online or offline and react accordingly. So first of all, let's add 
a uh, little note for the user so they know what's going on. So if this dot offline is true, what we'll do is we'll return a little HTML snippet. And if it's false, then we'll just return nothing at all. Nothing. So we'll import that. And here we can just add a little paragraph tag saying like, you are offline, save not available like that. All right, so we'll save that. And once it reloads, we should be able to go and try this out. So I'll go offline here. And what you can see is that we now have a little note here saying that we're offline. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to disable these controls so that people don't try to do things that we know will fail. So let's go back online and let's take care of that. The way I'll do that is by using the disabled property on Vaadin components. So I'll just bind this to this dot offline. And I can copy this and use it to disable all the components that I want disabled. So that, that would be the text field, the button, and the checkbox. So I'll save those. And once it reloads, let's go and try it out. We'll go offline. We get the notification up here. And you can see that I can now uh, click all I want, but nothing happens because those things are disabled. And I have a helpful message here explaining why exactly they are disabled. All right, so that's it. Uh, just a quick introduction to how you can track the connection state and provide helpful uh, user experience enhancements based on that. Now, of course, we could make this even better. We could actually allow the user to do some uh, small tasks while they're offline, like say, save new tasks. But I'll save that for our next video. So if you want to see that video or have ideas for other videos or have questions, post them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. So thanks for watching. Bye.